ruckus, ruckus, ruckus. So, we often hear about in the Bible uh, the, the, the tabernacle or the temple or, you know, the holy tent that the Israelites were in. What significance does this have? And what does this have to do with what we go through in our modern time as we worship Christ? We're about to dig into that right now. And we're going to connect this lesson to our previous lesson, which talked about tithing and how Christ is now our high priest. So it all connects together. So get your pen, get your pad, get your Bibles. Let's jump right into it right now. I am his humble servant and once again this is straight word the Bible study series where we get into the word uh, we go deep into it without a lot of the dramatics without a lot of the fluff so we're gonna get straight into this study today once again we're gonna start our study on the sanctuary now God gave a specific breakdown of what his space looked like and it came from what it looked like in heaven so we're going to dig into the word and see what the significance of that is and, and how that applies to what we do today when we worship. So let's jump right into it. We're going to start off in Exodus. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 25. We'll look at verses 8 and 9. It reads, And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them, according to all that I show thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall ye make it. Okay, so this is in Exodus. So this is God talking to the children of Israel who he um, led out of slavery of Egypt. So what is he telling them? He says, let, let you all make a sanctuary for me. But look at verse number nine. It says, according to all that I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle. So the plan that God is laying out for the Israelites to build this sanctuary is modeled after something else. It says after the pattern of the tabernacle. What tabernacle is being talked about here that is being a model for the sanctuary? That's right. It's the tabernacle in heaven that's already been set in place. So everything that that the building plan laid out that we're going to see and we're going to discuss this has already been laid out in heaven and now god is allowing him to have space on earth to dwell in as well so here in in the um in exodus the children of israel are building their dwelling place in tents because remember they're going through the wilderness they're on their journey to get to the promised land so currently they don't have, um, uh, you know, homes or structures that are, are still, they have tents because they're moving and they're living in them as they travel. So God gives them a layout for a sanctuary to be in specific tents here. But when we fast forward, uh, as the, the children of Israel make their dwelling in the promised land and we have kings and generations to go forth, eventually... They want to build a sanctuary there. And we know that King Solomon did that. If you look at 1 Kings chapter 6, it'll give you the layout of how King Solomon built the temple, which was the physical structure, which also God gave specific instruction for as well. So I'm not going to go through all of this because it would take too long to read through all of these chapters. But I want you to remember to reflect on Exodus chapter 25 through chapter 30. And that shows the layout of the tent structure of the sanctuary and the specific instructions God gave there. And then also referencing 1 Kings chapter 6, which gives the instruction of Solomon's temple. 
but what we're going to discuss is that specific layout and parallels between the two and we can draw the connection that this is how the sanctuary in heaven is laid out so as we look at the structure and what god uh, told his children to build remember them being in tents so they had everything spaced out and in the midst of their dwelling they have what they now beyond the outer courts once we get into the inner workings of the tent we have the holy place the holy place is where the priests could enter in and offer sacrifice now once we get into the holy place there where there is where the altar of incense lies and the table of showbread this is where sacrificing begins where the priests would do their thing this is also where the cleansing happened for the priests. Uh, a lot of the sanctification process happens here in the holy place. The holy place is a place just for the priests to be. If you had no place doing uh, uh, these sanctification processes, then you could not enter into the holy place. Now beyond the holy place, we have the holy of holies. What is the holy of holies? The holy of holies is the place specified for God's presence to be. And you really didn't want to go in there if you had no place being there. Um, this is where the instruction of the Ark of the Covenant would be held. And that's both in uh, the old setup in the tents where the children of Israel had it. And as well as when they built their temple. And at the times when they had the ark in their, in their possession, it would be a resting place there as well. Remember, the ark of the covenant signified God's presence with this people. So we look at this layout and we think about things on the term of the instruction of how God said to operate within the confines of this layout. Remember, the outer course, the congregation, that's where his people could come and worship in peace. Then we have the holy place. The holy place is where the priests could come and offer sacrifice and do uh, what they needed to do as far as um, sanctification process and, and sacrificial process. Then we have the holy of holies where the high priest could come in. The high priest had to be in good standing. It had to be cleansed in order for him to come into this place and it had to be for a specific time and a specific purpose so we're going to remember these things and we're going to relate it to our previous lesson now remember we were discussing tithe and we came to the conclusion that now christ is our high priest christ is now our high priest so he actually fulfills spiritually the very same process that we're seeing naturally that God instructed the children of Israel to do. Next lesson, we're going to get a little bit deeper into that very idea. And we're going to break down the process. We're going to look at it physically, how the priests in, in Israel did the process. And we're going to parallel that spiritually to the ministry of Christ. But for now, let's, let's pray real quickly. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to come together and study your word once again. We thank you for connecting our studies and, and allowing us to go deeper and deeper into study. We ask that the Holy Spirit lead and guide us so we get the correct revelation. We get the correct interpretation that you have for us. And this we ask that we may be a light that shines out to all men that we can lead them to you through your love. These things we ask and pray in Yahshua's precious name. Thank you, Father. It is done. All right. So I'm glad we were able to start this study. Remember, I'm giving you a lot of uh, back study to do, a lot of research to look into. That's Exodus chapter 25 through 30. And also um, what we're looking at, the physical setup. That's 1 Kings chapter 6. So... This time, you have your homework cut out for you. But until next lesson, always remember, study the word for yourself so you can get the straight word with no chase.